Yeah. John drove in from California. I'm right back to California tonight. So yeah, I agree. No, I think so. I'm just sure that it. But yeah, we're going, we're going home tonight. There's beer out there, about uh, 10 cases of beer. Yeah, that ain't kidding. That's not cool. You wouldn't learn that. It doesn't sound like this company. Actually, they can buy some food. You wouldn't learn, would you, if we were all drunk? Actually, yes. Learn better. Learn how to drink. Wow. I thought you were going to do that. I didn't insult you. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's so you get through this like you guys said, and we'll let you get out of here quick. I'm going to do about 45 minutes of what's cable, what I call cable 101 before we even touch the meters or talk about the meters at all. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something. If I tell you anything you guys already know, uh, sorry about that. But if you have questions, please ask because I'm going to hopefully teach you some cool things that, that you might not already know. Also, just to reiterate what Tom said too. Uh, he's right, actually, about loose connectors, and I never believed it. I've been in cable TV about 20 years now, and uh, they came and installed a cable modem at my new house probably about a year ago, and I knew the installation manager, you know, of course, and uh, told him I was moving in, and he brought four of his best guys, and, you know, they were doing a hell of a job for me and everything, and, and at the end, my modem didn't work. I was having sync issues, and he said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a cable guy, so I've, I've got all this test equipment. I know how to use all the stuff I'm going to show you guys, so I... Pull out my meters, doing all my fancy tests, can't find the problem, can't find the issue. Uh, I call my buddy up and he says, I'll be out, we'll put on some new connectors. It's weather, it's been changing weather, it's been changing a lot. It was springtime. Came out, cut on a new connector, didn't work. And I laughed and I thought, yeah, he was wrong. I do a connector, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Connectors on there. When I was a kid, I just shoved cable in the back of my TV to get, you know, to get channels. I mean, I connect or nothing, as long as it's grounded, it's good. I called him up and he said, uh, let me come back out there, I'll put another connector on. Like the double reboot of your computer. Sure enough, he put a second connector on and it fixed the issue. Never heard of it since. I couldn't believe it. And it comes down to what Tom's saying. Uh, expansion and contraction of cables. When it gets cold and hot, you know, that's what the ground does. So, uh, so I, you actually, uh, I told him that story yesterday because I couldn't believe it. You know, I thought if it was grounded, that was the end of the discussion. But turns out, not. So, Henry, you guys have a bunch of new meters in front of you. Uh, they are CM 1000s, Sunrise CM 1000s, and they don't have them. Yeah. They don't yeah. have them yet, but they're coming. I just see all the test lines, and I thought I thought they might be in. Okay. All right. In any regard, they're cable motor meters, so they basically have cable motors inside them. Uh, a lot of things come with that, and I guess the main moral of the story is that no longer are you just checking the signal level. Now, now, and I'm going to show you here in a second, there's, there's two or three other big things that are important other than signal level. Signal level is uh, yesterday's news. You guys know all too well that you can have good signal level and have tiling on screen or, you know, uh, problem with digital or problem with modem and signal level looks fine, right? And so you're probably thinking, what do I fix? And you don't really know what to fix. It's not signal level. You know, to replace the things, connectors and splitters and you know, whatever it might be until you find the problem. Well, I'm going to hopefully show you how we can give you put a tool in your hand to help you do a little better than that. And I usually call that parts changing. You know, without if you don't really know what you're doing, you're parts changing. I, I always make fun of people now too that they always say reboot or reinstall Windows on your computer. I've got a couple of computer buddies, and they always say whenever I have problems, reinstall. Well, uh, that's reinstall if you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what the problem is, yeah, start over. And that's kind of the same thing as what parts changing is, right? Plugging and chugging means you don't know what the heck you're doing. If my auto guy does that to me, it's not good news. You know, it changes out five things and until he finds the one. He's not paying somebody to learn, to paying them to fix the problem and what they're doing. So hopefully we'll give you some tools to put in your hand to do that. Uh, the main thing I want to talk about is just kind of cable 101, and hopefully you guys will be able to relate to this pretty well. This is called the frequency spectrum. And everything in our world kind of revolves in the frequency spectrum. And what I mean by that is visible light, sound waves, radio waves, microwaves, gamma rays, x-rays, everything's a wave. Even sound is a wave. You kind of think of it as being different than an electrical wave, which it is, but it's still a waveform. And so everything almost kind of falls into this, into this spectrum. And we've kind of got a couple examples of it in our own life. We've got AM and FM radios, right? So we kind of know, you guys know because you're a cable, you know what frequency is, and you know what the spectrum is, you know that return in a cable system is 542, and forward is 
55 to 870 or whatever it might be. But you also have a lot of other things that's out there other than just what we named. You've got, you know, everything from radios in your car to cordless phones, things like that. So I'll talk a little bit about that and kind of give you an idea about how things work. Uh, in the frequency spectrum in our world, in cable TV, we have television channels. And they kind of look like this. You guys ever seen something like this before? Anybody? I can't see anything. Sorry. You guys have seen something like that before? That's the frequency spectrum, right? And so these are TV channels, and if your meters, uh, the ones you're going to be getting have a spectrum on them, and you can go in and look at each individual channel, and you can see, but you kind of know some things on your own without seeing this. You know that each channel is 6 megahertz apart, right? Channel 2 is 55.2625, right, for the uh, video here. You kind of know some of the frequencies and some of the channels. But here's just kind of a graphical representation of what's going on. Right down here you have frequency measured in megahertz. And up here you have amplitude. What's amplitude measured in? <laughs> Anybody? DBs, you heard of that before? Right? Decimals. Decimals. Decimals, right? What's, where's decimal coming from? DB, well, DB decimals per millivolt, but, not, but that's okay. There's dBs. Does anybody know why the B in, in dBs is capitalized? No. Because Will, why is it capitalized? Come on, Will. Come on, Will. Because of Alexander Graham Bell, and it's out of respect. Correct. Because Bell is his last name. That's correct. Absolutely. It's his last name. It's his name, right? But it's, it's not, hold on. There's not two L's in this. No, it's short. It's actually, a decibel is, well, no, it's not, that's absolutely true. It's one-tenth of a bell, and a bell is a unit of measurement named after Alexander Graham Bell, and a deca means ten, like a decade, is a decibel. And so, you know, one of the unusual things, I didn't talk, I haven't talked about this before, but um, isn't it kind of odd that a double in power is three and a half dB? You kind of know that, right? When you go through a splitter, each side is minus three and a half, right? Well, you're splitting the signal in half. Half goes one way and half goes the other. How come it's only three? If you're putting 10 dBs in it, why aren't you getting five out this side and five out the other? Why did both only go down three? Well, the reason is is because it's a logarithm, and that's why it's called, a, that's what a decibel is. It's a, it's a logarithm, so that we can just add and subtract. We don't want to have to make you do any multiplication or division. So everything you have to do is pretty much add and subtract, right? Which is good news. So, at any rate, let's get back to this. Um, these are your general TV channels, and you know that they're six megahertz apart. And I'm going to ask you a couple other questions here. What, when you go to a house, what channel is always the strongest? Yeah, Tom. Can we pause for a second? Sure. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about the frequency spectrum, there's a couple things I want to tell you, and what I was going to say is uh, what channel is the hottest channel? Whenever you go to a house. Two. Uh, yeah. Two. Does anybody know why it's the hottest? Because the lowest frequency. That's frequency. right. What about it being the lowest it makes it the hottest? Easy. Because it goes, it's it goes, it goes like this. It's, it's traveling up and down the least. Yeah. That's true. That's absolutely right. Very, very correct. So, so let's talk about that. So, so there's a waveform, right? And here's another one. And the difference is. Which one's high frequency and which one's low frequency? Low frequency is on top. Uh, that's right, low frequency. Because how many ups does that? It's not very frequent. It doesn't go up and down very frequently. So it's low frequency, <laughs> right? Can you say frequent one more time? That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, it's got to be simple for me to understand it. And that's simple right there. Frequent. I got it. Now, what about this one? This one goes up and down more frequently, doesn't it? <laughs> high frequency. It's high frequency. Okay, <laughs> see, it's just don't just change one letter and you got it. All right, so, so low frequencies, just by the nature of them, they travel further. And high frequencies do something else. High frequencies bounce around a lot. So if you guys have ever done locates, that some of you have actually located stuff before, I don't know, shovel. Yeah, okay. me too, with a shovel. Hold four hands locate, right? Uh, at any rate, with locators, you always start off on low frequency and then you go to high frequency. You go to high frequency, you get around things like water pipes have rubber uh, grommets in them every four feet. You have to bounce over that grommet, things like that. So just always remember, and I'm going to tell you a lot of things today that don't have anything to do with the meter, but are things that you can just always remember that are just.